Hello everyone and welcome back to the Green Man channel. Hope you're doing good and well. So it's time for another top 10 countdown list on the channel. This time I'm counting down my top 10 horror films from the year 2021. Of course this follows on from my top 10 horror films of 2022. So rather like I am with the album list, I'm working my way back through each and every year choosing my favourite horror films from that particular year. So 2021 was obviously very affected by Covid. I'm sure some of these, at least some of these films, their release dates, probably their production was affected by the pandemic. But um, please remember, these are all going to be personal choices. I'm sure you'll have different picks as your top 10 horror films from that year. Please do drop those in the comments. I look forward to reading those and maybe even checking them out if you recommend those as horror films for me to check out. But anyway, let's not waste any more time. You know the drill by now with these lists. I'm going to start with my number 10, which is No One Gets Out Alive, directed by Santiago Mengini. And this film wasn't really breaking any new grounds, I don't think. I just found it just an enjoyable horror film to watch, particularly with the sequence, I think, with the monster or the, the parts of the film where you saw the monster. I just thought that was really cool. Um, I enjoyed the performance of the leads in this film, uh, Christina Rodlow. Um, and I just thought it, you know, yes, it had some horror tropes in, you know, it's kind of someone moving into a new place for the first time. There's something odd about the place. There's weird people. There's something in the basement. You know, those sorts of things going on. But I enjoyed the way the film handled uh, its its like its bigger scenes and, and the way the film had a pretty good atmosphere as well. And it, it did enough to get into my top 10 this year. So that's my number 10. No one gets out alive um, from 2021. At number nine, uh, I've got Escape Room, Tournament of Champions. A hot take this to have this in my top 10 list because I know this isn't really... Uh, this isn't really well liked as a movie and certainly I think most Escape Room fans or fans of that particular franchise like the first film but maybe aren't as keen on this one. Uh, and I think the reasons are that the second film, you know, it has some pretty confusing puzzles in, you know, the, the Escape Rooms are, are kind of very convoluted in their ideas. There's, there's a lot going on in, in some of them. But, you know, I like this film because I think it does the tension and the suspense really well. Um, I tend to love anything game-based, any trap-based, any game-based horror. I'm all in. I, I love that kind of horror. And um, therefore, I do enjoy Escape Room. And I think with the second film, I feel like it developed nicely from the first film. I enjoyed the way that Ben and Zoe's relationship was developed as well. I thought that was really good. And, and actually, the reason that I even prefer this to the first film is the first film just reminded me, I thought it borrowed quite a lot from the film Cube from the 1990s, whereas this film felt a little bit more, for me, a little bit more unique. I enjoyed the settings, I enjoyed what they did, the design of things and the performances were pretty solid. Uh, I liked the cast and I just thought it was overall a fun time. And sometimes that's all that I need is just to have a blast with the film. And with Escape Room 2, Tournament of Champions, I just enjoyed it. So that's my number nine, that was directed by Adam Robitel. Coming in at number eight is a very unique film, a very, very low budget film, a family made film called Hellbender, not to be confused with the film Hellbenders, um, but this was just a really unusual film. Um, I think it was, uh, it's basically a story about a family that have a history of witchcraft involved um, uh, with, their, with their family history. And um, there are some very memorable scenes in this film that you're not going to forget anytime soon. Yes, you can tell the film is very low budget, but I kind of like that style uh, and it suits the film and its topic and um, I enjoy the performances in this one as well considering you know that it is, has come from a, you know, almost you know out of nowhere, it's very very low budget, unknown cast pretty much I think as far as I'm aware in this movie. But Hellbender is a very enjoyable film, I liked the mother and daughter both being in a metal band as well, I thought that was a cool touch that the film had. So that's my, my, my number eight, Hellbender. My number seven is Resident Evil, Welcome to Raccoon City. And, uh, you know, a, a bit like with Escape Room 2, I, I just have a great time with this film. It's not anything that's particularly groundbreaking, um, but I do like the way it, it, it uses the games a bit more as its inspiration. You know, it's not so much like the Resident Evil films that we have in Milijovovich starring. This is, this is a different take on the Resident Evil franchise that I enjoyed. I liked its focus a bit more on the games and elements of the games. Um, I enjoyed Chaos Codelario as Claire Redfield as well. Love the action sequences in the film. It still has problems. I still think that it's not always like some of the characters I didn't think were particularly well realised. I thought they could have been more built into the story than there was. 
Um, but overall, a blast, a fun time, and sometimes, as I say, that's all I need with a film. Um, and Resident Evil Welcome to Raccoon City I thought was very, very enjoyable, and I can watch it time and again pretty much that one. So um, that was directed by Johannes Roberts. Coming in at number six, we've got Malignant, directed by James Wan. And another film which is very divisive. I seem to be picking some divisive films in this list, I think. This is very divisive. Um, I love it because I just love the unhinged, wild final act when, um, you know, Annabelle Wallace's character Maddie, Madeline is changing into um, Gabriel as well and it just goes completely off the wall. Gabriel just starts going crazy, killing everybody. Um, and it's just a fantastic, uh, just absolutely unhinged scene. It's total madness, um, but I love it. And uh, it's partly the reason why Malignant is quite high, because I just love films which are a little bit unpredictable with what they do. You don't really know what's going to happen next as such. And I think Malignant achieves that for me. It's a surprise at the end. It's not, you know, the way the film's going, you think it might be a, a darker toned ending, but it's just off the wall. It's fun, but I love it. And Malignant is my number six from 2020, 20, 2020, 2021, 2021. My number five is a very stylish mystery horror film which is directed by Edgar Wright and it's called Last Night in Soho. I actually thought this was going to be my number one but when I looked at the other films on this list I decided on a different, uh, different number one and a different top four um, that this has ended up therefore at my number five. Um, but it's yeah, a very stylishly filmed horror film. It stars Thomas e. McKenzie as a graphic design student who... Um, goes to live in Soho and she um, she sort of has visions. She's haunted by visions of this woman that was living in the 1960s and, um, you know, experiencing a, a pretty difficult time. And I think this film has a commentary about the treatment of women uh, in it for sure. Um, and I do like the way that um, the film negotiates that and that you learn more about this character called Sandy that... Um, this, uh, that Thomas E. McKenzie's character, Ellie, is, is seen almost through the eyes of her through much of the film. I think it's really nicely done. It's a strange film. It's not necessarily one that I enjoy re-watching a lot, to be perfectly honest, but it is stunningly and beautifully filmed um, and shot. And I do think it's a good film from that year. Very, very good, solid mystery horror film from 2021. Coming out next, uh, number four, is another real, this is a dark horse horror film from that year that I urge you to watch and check out if you haven't. It's an Irish psychological horror film called You Are Not My Mother, directed by Kate Dolan. And this is a great little horror film. Um, it does have, you know, the, the mother and daughter thing, which we've seen so many times in horror, but I like the way this one delicately handles um, this situation in this film, where the daughter, uh, the mother's gone missing and who's come back Seems like it might be the mother, but we're not totally sure on the way the film reveals it teases who this actually is. We we start to realise that this is some sort of imposter and you sympathise with the lead, the character played by Hazel Dupin in this film a lot. She goes through a lot in this movie and I think the film is just, you know, it kind of has this lovely, like, uh, really well done fragility about it. And um, I really enjoy watching this one. And I love, again, the way it's shot, the beautiful shots, the camera shots of, of I think it's North Dublin, certainly somewhere in Ireland. But I love the way it, it's all shot and um, absolutely lovely little horror film, actually. Really recommend it. You Are Not My Mother from 2021, directed by Kate Dolan. My number three is the second part in the Fear Street trilogy, which came out on Netflix that year, uh, Fear Street Part 2. Um, directed by Lee Janiak. I'm not sure if I pronounced that surname quite correctly. Um, I really enjoyed this film. I think it's my favourite in the trilogy. I liked the way that it sort of has both the fun elements of the screen films with the gory sort of um, thrilling elements of, say, a Friday the 13th film and, and the fun elements of both of those franchises combined almost. It's, it's kind of very teeny. It's, it's, it's a film, it's called a teenage supernatural slasher film. I think it gets described as these, these films. I'd say that's about right, um, but I enjoy this one. I enjoyed watching it. I like the performances of Sadie Sink and Emily Rudd in the sister roles in this film. And uh, yeah, it's it's just a very fun slasher film 
uh, that harks back to, I think, some of those 80s slasher movies, but does so, I think, in a, a new, slightly more Stranger Things-like way. And it's a good, it's a good, good, good film. It's my number three. Coming at number two is a widely critically acclaimed film, one that really has, um, you know, is often mentioned when you talk about horror films from that year or from recent times. I hear this film coming up time and time again in conversation. That's The Black Phone, stars Ethan Hawke, was directed by Scott Derrickson. And this is just a great film, I think. It's really, really well done. Uh, again, a film which handles quite a delicate subject matter, one which, if it wasn't well executed, could come off, uh, you know, and be a bit of a disaster. It's one of those films that's it's handled very, very well, and it's thanks to a lot of the performances, I think, of the cast. Of course, Ethan Hawke Hawk is the grabber. Great child performance, a uh, child actor performance from Mason Temps as Finney. Um, and it's just overall a very, very well accomplished, very well polished, well produced, all well, good story, uh, dealing with a difficult topic and doing it very, very well. So I felt like it deserved to be my runner up for 2021, which leaves just one horror film left. What is my number one horror film of 2021? Well, it's not actually one I've talked about on this channel yet. It's a reboot, it's Wrong Turn from 2021. And this was directed by uh, Mike Nelson. And what I love about this film is that it was a total surprise. I actually watched this quite recently. I didn't watch it in 2021 when it came out. And I just was, I was really surprised at how much I loved this. I thought, wow, you know, it's sort of got, um, it's very gory. Uh, and maybe that's the reason why I enjoy it. Um, but it's, it's got suspense in. It, it, the, the way that the traps are worked in is clever. It's intelligent. It's not mindless, mindless kills and mindless, you know, the mindless aspects that a lot of the other wrong term films have. Let's be honest, that's not a great franchise. And yet this film manages to reboot the franchise with a new take and does so in a way which is a little different and yet still feels, you know, manages to feel fresh. And um, I enjoy the performance of Charlotte Plaga as the lead in this film. Matthew Modine is in this movie, um, which is interesting. And it, it's, it's, it's just really, really edge of your seat stuff at times. And that's what I want in a horror film. I love to be on the edge of my seat wondering what's going to happen next which, you know, a lot of these horror films fail to do that, even with kills. Whereas I felt the kills in this film were also a little bit like, oh, you know, what's, what's going to happen to our cast of characters here? I'm not quite sure this film's going to take an ugly twist, but I'm not sure what sort of ugly twist we're going to get. And I love that about what this, how this film does all of that. I still think it's pretty solid, solid performances and a total surprise. It's turned out it's my number one favourite horror film from 2021. Let me know again, as I say at the start, uh, your favourite horror films from that particular year. Hope you're enjoying these lists. You've had two for this set. I'm spoiling you. I'm spoiling you with, with these lists at the moment. So I uh, hope you're enjoying these videos anyway. Do drop a like and a sub if you enjoy this kind of content. And uh, until next time, uh, until Symphonic Sundays, I think, is the next thing on the channel. So until then, bye for now.